Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. Our unique team helps small businesses grow by providing essential marketing expertise. Hello, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. My name is Bill Palmentier of W. Palmentier Photography. I'm Justin with Justin Kerr Design. And I'm Alicia Piazza with The Spark Social. And together we make up the Marketing, marketing Essentials, Essentials Team. team. Yeah, not bad, not We've bad. We've got a thumbs up. we got a Good. thumbs up from our guest. For, yes, so we have a special guest with us here today. Ed McDonough is with us here today to talk to us about email marketing. And Ed, you got to remind me, the name of your company again is? ECE Marketing Services. Okay. So we really appreciate you coming on yes, today welcome. to talk to us about email marketing and kind of give us the scoop on how to really make sales using email marketing. So how long have you been doing this now? So my marketing company started in 2009. So in January, I hit 10 years. Awesome. We've been doing email marketing pretty much full time for just about two years now. Wow. Okay. All right. Now, uh, prior to what was your background? Prior to my company? Yeah, prior to email marketing. Um, so I was in IT for 25 years, and then I actually started a custom furniture and woodworking business, which I ran for seven years, and that's kind of how I fell in love with marketing. Um, oh, I wait, hold, hold on now. I'm, I'm trying to draw the lines here. So we went from IT to custom Somebody. furniture to email marketing. Yeah, you don't follow that? Yeah, uh, yeah that makes logic. It's, yeah. it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just a, you know ABC. So while I had my furniture business, I actually started uh, coaching other woodworkers on how to do marketing. And uh, again, this was back in like 2002. So uh, internet and things were a lot different back then. And that's really where I discovered I just love marketing. I like that part of it better than anything else. So um, I decided to end the life, my furniture business, and start a marketing company. And that's exactly what happened. And here we are 10 years later. Wow. Awesome. On, the po- on the best podcast in town. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got to make that payment. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite an interesting journey to go from IT to custom furniture to yeah. marketing. But how did you get from, you know, general marketing uh, over to email marketing? Like, a, obviously, you got very specific. So what, what was that journey? So... Part of what I was doing was working in the fitness industry with gyms, doing a lot of Facebook advertising. And uh, what I realized was that most of my income was relying on that. And, you know, if for some reason I woke up one day and Facebook didn't like Ed McDonough anymore, I was in big trouble. So what I decided to do was start to shift what I was doing with Facebook advertising by using the client's email list. And that's really what got me to start using email to with my clients. I had been using it all along as a cold prospecting tool for my own business. So I already had the platform in place. It was just a matter of you know making some adjustments so that I could start to use that with my clients. Okay. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about the sort of sales end of email mm. marketing. And obviously you've developed a way of helping small business owners entrepreneurs of increasing sales through the use of email marketing. Why don't you give us a little bit of an, you know, an overview of that? So there's a ton of different ways to market yourself. Uh, email marketing, one aspect of it, what, what are the advantages to that, say, versus some of the other marketing channels? Well, one of the main advantages of what I do is that most businesses already have a list of people you know, a list of email addresses that they've collected from people. So whether that's prospects or past customers or customers, um, they have that list. And typically the only thing you're doing is maybe sending out a monthly newsletter. You know, very rarely do I meet a business that has their email marketing fully engaged. Uh, As a matter of fact, uh, I I haven't met one that that really uses their email marketing to their greatest advantage. So um, so what, what we do is we actually use email marketing primarily just to drive sales to the business. So 
It's a little bit different than doing branding and awareness type of marketing, which, by the way, is awesome, and everybody should be doing that too. But you know, our, our niche in the marketplace is really being able to help the business develop an offer and then use a unique email marketing strategy to get that offer out to their list and actually get people to engage, take action, and either come into the business if they're a brick-and-mortar business or if they're not, you know, take the next step towards making a sale. Yeah, I know when we talked before, you – you have a very specific sort of step-by-step process, which starts with that, as you described it, the irresistible offer. Mm. So can you walk us through that? I say, what is this step- irres- irresistible uh, offer well, thing? There's, wait, there's more. He's oh, going to tell oh, you what yeah, that irresistible yeah. offer is. So walk us through that step-by-step process. Yeah, sure. And let me just take a little step back. So, you know, the thing that, the thing that makes email marketing work is it's kind of the... F- there's kind of four parts to it, and I call it DORO, D-O-R-O. So there's delivery, open, read, and outcome. And so all four of those things have to align in order for your email marketing uh, campaign to work. So part of the open part is the irresistible offer. So what we do is we help businesses come up with an offer that it could be for something free, it could be a free service or a product, or it could be a gift with purchase, which seems to work really, really well. So we help them develop that offer using uh, their products and services because we want to we want to keep it local. We want to make sure that people are coming into the business. If it's a brick and mortar business, which is mostly the clients that I work with, so uh, so it starts with the irresistible offer. The next thing we do is we take a look at their list and we actually segment their list into prospects past clients, so a past client is someone who hasn't purchased for them in 12 months or more, and then current clients. And uh, if we can segment the list that way, then we can change the offer based on that segment. And of course, different segments respond to even the same offer in different ways. If if the case is that that the client does not have their list segmented, then part of what we'll do as we work with them is segment it for them. Um, So once we have the offer and we have the list segmented, we actually send out a five-part email sequence for the same offer. So each email is a little bit different than the one before it, but they all reference the same offer. And the reason why we do that is because it increases the engagement rate. So a lot of times in email marketing, people talk about open rates and click-through and things like that all kind of important, but the real, the most important thing about the type of email marketing we do is engagement. We want the person to look at the offer, download a, a coupon or a voucher if that's what they need to do, and then come into the business and actually spend some money because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Right. You know? Get them in the door. Yeah, sure. exactly. So, so that's, you know, that's my critical measurement in every email campaign I, I run is you know what's the engagement rate? Are we getting those people to the, come in? And are we more importantly, are we making sure that your email marketing campaign is giving you a return on your investment right out of the box? You know that's the number one thing I'm shooting for. Is I want to make sure that the business is is generating more revenue than they're paying me to run their marketing campaign. And so that's that's really the process. It's it's pretty simple, but it it's very effective when you do it that way. Okay. Well, it's interesting that, you know, you talked about getting that return on an investment as quickly as possible because we uh, recently did an interview with Michelle Garasoli, who we also talked to her about email marketing, and she was talking more about, you know, building lists, your email list, and building relationships. And she talked about that in sort of the long game, which it is, you mm-hmm. know, building up that that, Absolutely. That yep. list. But now you're talking about sort of the short game aspect of it is like, okay, now that you've got your list... And now that you've got a process, you want to return that investment as quickly as possible. So, you know, you talked about segmenting lists, which is, you know, a great way to target Mm -hmm. uh, certain people and certain behaviors. What are some of the other ways of making sure you get that return on investment as quickly as possible? It really comes down to what you were just talking about, the segmenting, because as you run email marketing campaigns, what happens is you can start segmenting buyers into different types of lists so you can you can build a list of what i call hyper buyers where every time you send an offer out they actually will make a purchase 
And so wouldn't it be great to know the 30 people on your list that every time you send an offer out, they're going to buy from you. Yeah. You know, they're going to come in and take advantage of that. And even if it's just 30 people, you know, that's almost like instant revenue. It's, it's kind of synonymous to what the catalog business used to be. You know, the catalog business, they'd send out 10,000 catalogs and they knew they were going to generate almost to the penny X amount of dollars in, in sales. Sure. So this turns out to be the same thing. So we build a list of hyper buyers. Um, we build a list of the occasional buyers. So people who maybe only purchase once a quarter or, or once every other offer or whatever we send out. We're also building a list of people who engage the offer but never come in and make a purchase. And so now we can target them in a different way. And then one of the most incredible things that we do, uh, which is going to sound so simple, but nobody ever thinks of it, is we actually target the people who never even open your email. And the reason why we do that is because every time we take the unopened list and we email them the same five-part sequence again a week or two later, about 10% of them engage. Wow. And so most people want to, take, want to throw them off their list. Oh, they never opened my email. Well, let's define never. You know, <laughs> how many did you send them that they never yeah. opened? And um, so, you know, so the, the better you can segment your list and understand how they buy the better job you do with your email marketing. It just come, you know, it's it's that simple. And, you know, we track and measure everything we do. We have our own proprietary platform that we use. So it allows us to really get down into the weeds and see, you know, what your buyers are doing. And, and that just helps us help you make more money. And is the reason for the proprietary platform so that you can get better analytics and insights or? That's a, that's a great question. That's part of it. One of the reasons we use our own platform is because unlike a do-it-yourself platform like Constant Contact or MailChimp or any of those, which are not bad by any means whatsoever, um, our platform is not a do-it-yourself. It's a done-for-you. So we get a much higher delivery rate. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the first part of the Doro is delivery. You have to get the email into someone's inbox before they can open it. Mm -hmm. And because of the way the do-it-yourself platforms are structured, they can't get nearly the delivery rate that I can right. get. Yeah. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is uh, really the analytics. So we track everything from start to finish. We know what emails were open, how many times they were open, what action the person took. Um, a lot of times part of our system is to is to have a landing page. So we, we send an email message out. The person clicks and goes to a landing page to get the offer or an offer page, if you will. And so we track if they go to that page, what they do when they get to that page, if it has a video on that page, did they watch the video, how long they watch the video. Nice. So that's all built into our system. And uh, it just allows us to do a better job with understanding what the, what the prospects and clients are doing so that we can guide our, our clients into making better offers. You know, we, after we do this a couple of times, we know what type of offers work better. We know how the audience responds. So we just continue to do more of that. And it lets, you know, it, it benefits everybody. Do you work with a lot of restaurants? Um, I don't. Okay. Uh, not in email marketing. I, I have worked with restaurants in the, in the past. I did a whole birthday club thing on uh, Facebook advertising, but um, I haven't worked with any for email marketing. Typically, restaurants aren't real great at getting email addresses, but I'd certainly be open to, you know, talking to somebody if they wanted to do it. Yeah, I guess that kind of leads me to my next question. Like, what types of businesses can set up on this, on you know, with a system to keep doing the offers and having this aggressive, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but more like a consistent email program in place? What type of businesses benefit the most? So the best type of business for this is a service type of business that mm -hmm. sees a lot of clients on a regular basis and is collecting their email address. So day spas, hair, hair salons, pet groomers, auto repair, chiropractors, dentists, you know, that's, that's kind of the, my target market right there. We do work with other types of businesses. I have a mortgage company I work with. I have an insurance person I work with. And we do great stuff for them. But it's more on a quarterly basis where those t other types of businesses, there's something we can do every month to help them. We can even help them build their email list as well. Part of, part of the services we offer is doing viral contests, which allow us to you know, build that email list for them so that there's even more people that we can go and market to. 
Cool. That's really cool. Mm. I mean, I can see the benefit when you talk about these businesses where you want to get them back in the door sooner than later. You don't want to wait a few months before you send out a monthly email. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to go back a little bit to some of the step-by-step process. You have a, a five, I don't want to say five-step process, but you, you have a five email system that you developed. So how did you land on five? Was it, you know, hey, we tried seven and that didn't work. We tried three and that didn't work. And So I am um, I'm a true marketer. I split test in everything that we do. Okay. You know, subject lines, content, format. So for the uninitiated, we yep. have to define some of these terms. So split testing. Okay, great. Got to define so, that. Yeah, absolutely. So split testing means to take a, a piece, whether it, and this could be a web page or a email or, or anything or a printed piece, and you change uh, one thing in that piece, and then you send it out to the same type of market, and you see which one responds, which one gets you the best response. So involved in that is measuring, um, which most people don't do. They, they advertise, but they don't have any real way to bring it full circle and measure how that advertising works. So that's, back to Alicia's point, that's part of why we built our own system is so that we can test different things against each other and make sure that we're always using the one that performs the best. Sure, makes sense. So is split testing something that is just part of your normal process when you're working with somebody on email marketing? Yeah, um, it, it is and it isn't. It, if it's an industry that we're, we know about, we pretty much don't do any split testing. We just take what works and we use that. If the offer is going to be really different or if we think the, the market is really different or if we do something and it doesn't work very well, then we might do some split testing. But for instance, in, you know, we work a lot in the day spa industry. So we know what kind of offers work, how the emails have to be structured, you know, what subject lines get open the most. Um, so we pretty much just we can hit a home run out of the park. Awesome. You know, pretty much every time. So you, since you measure everything, then, then five, I would imagine, it was a result of looking at all the data, you know, aggregating it and saying, well, five seems to be that right amount of touches when it comes to email marketing. Yeah, it's a great balance between sending out enough reminders that you're not annoying anybody <laughs> and not annoying anybody. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You know, with we, we've tested six, seven, nine, twelve, and for for you know that type of marketing, just five just seems to work the best. And and we do it over a sixteen day period, which is another thing we tested too. Is you know what's too frequent, what's not frequent yeah. enough, um, what's the balance there. So between between a lot of testing, we figured out the formula that works the best, mm-hmm. and it's five emails over a sixteen day period. It just works. So. Yeah. One other question about, you know, measuring and you have that segment that does not open the emails. So you say, let's go back and give them another round to see if we can capture a certain percentage of them. In your research, have you ever discovered, like, what are some of the main reasons that people don't open it? I mean, a most obvious one is they're not interested, but there must be other reasons because you're capturing 10% of that group when you go back again. Right. I wish I had the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A million dollar question, Be, right? Because, um, yeah, I, yeah, because it would really totally put us in a different place. I, honestly, I don't know because we literally send the same five-part email sequence to the exact audience that didn't open it the last time and 10% of the people will open it. You know, so it's, I, I don't know why that happens. But, but I do know that it's worth it to go out and send it to them again because we're engaging more people. Well, sure. Yeah, 10% yeah. Is, is, is huge when yeah. you're talking about a, you know, a list of maybe, – maybe, maybe you've got a list of 5,000 right. contacts. Yep. You know? So that's a big number. Yeah, and if you have you know, 3,000 that don't open it and you can go back and get 10% of them or 8, 8 to 10%, yeah. you, know, that, you know, that's 300 people that didn't open it the first time. Right. Yeah. No, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. So you've mentioned a proprietary process, and I know you've developed a piece of software, and I imagine this comes from your IT background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me just a little bit about that proprietary piece of software that you've developed. Like, where did that come from? Yeah, so um, it's called the Quantum Email Marketing Platform, and um, you have to give it a name, so I'm a marketing guy, <laughs> right? So we give it a name. 
Um, but really, you, you the, want to just call it Ed's software? Yeah, I didn't want to call it that. So uh, the word quantum just sounds, I don't know, just sounds sexy or something. Yeah, so, no, it sounds <laughs> impressive. So, um, uh, but really, the, the reason the system was developed was so that I could use it to, uh, as part of a cold email marketing campaign to, for my company to get more, more customers. Um, and we still use it today, and it works like gangbusters. Uh, so part of the platform was, number one, is making sure that we get a very high delivery rate so we can get those emails into the inbox. And it's much harder to do when you're cold emailing than when you're emailing a warm list. The second part of it was being able to measure and track everything. And that's, you know, to me was extremely important. And although there are a ton of, you know, do-it-yourself tools out there, um, none of them had all the components that we wanted. You know, I, I just, uh, I love being able to put my finger on something and say, this is why this isn't working, you know, or, gee, you know, we sent a five-part email sequence out and the person didn't even open the first three. They opened the fourth one but they didn't engage till they got to number five. So that shows us that, what if we only sent three emails out? We never would have engaged that person. So, you know, so that's the second part of it, is being able to uh, measure everything. And then we also have uh, some great components built into that. Like for instance, the mortgage company that, that we're dealing with, um, we have a feature called real-time notification, where when someone opens an email we send, we send them a real-time notification they can get on the phone and say, hey, um, you know, Alicia, uh, just calling to see if you got our email. Um, you know, so, so not to be creepy or anything and saying, we saw you open your email, but you played it. You know, <laughs> We're watching you. Uh, yeah, you we played you outside. It. You yeah. played it from the other end. And, of course, Alicia says, yeah, as a matter of fact, I just opened it. Yeah. Great. You know, do you have any questions about it? So if you have a sales team in place, yeah. that's a really important feature to be able to see what's right. going on. Because they're, um, they're not wasting their time calling, you know, just random people all day. They're calling right. people who are ready to talk to them. And, and if you're the type of company that, likes to do multiple touches outside of email, it's perfect because you send the email, the ones that open them, you call them right away, that's your second touch. You know, even if you're leaving a voicemail, mm -hmm. um, you leave them on the list, they're gonna get that second email, you'll get the real-time notification again. So that's another powerful feature that's built into our, to our system. So really that was the kind of the logic behind it is being able to do exactly what we need to do to be the best at email marketing that we could possibly be. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That it seems like it has a really robust platform of, or features for the client to, be, you know, better utilize the list, get better results, and and as you said, tie it back to ROI or return on investment. Yeah, and that, you know, again, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is, you know, can we deliver clients to your door that are going to make you money and give you a return on your investment? And you know, I don't want you to just pay for email marketing. I want it to to be way more than than what you're paying me at, for a service to do this for you. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, because that, that's going to keep them happy. It's <coughs> going to keep them working with you. And long-time clients are better than, you know, the ones who just want all the results in one month and never Right. Want. And I think <laughs> that's important, too, because, I, I, you know, I've, I've spoken to people. They're like, oh, I tried email marketing. And they're like, you're like, well, what did you do? I sent out a monthly blast. And they don't have that consistency. And they don't understand the beauty of sequencing or putting like together these multiple touch points and that it takes time. And you really do have to have a system in place. And a lot of them don't have, A, the patience or B, the time to really set this up properly. Exactly. And, you know, the word blast, people use that all the time. And it's kind of like, let's throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. That's not a marketing strategy. No, no it's know. not. Everybody well, gets the same right. email, yeah. no <laughs> matter what. What. What, we do, what we do is, it, it, you know, is, is um, a, a, a defined, proven marketing strategy. The other thing we do, too, is you said everybody gets the same email. We have an incredible capability to do dynamic personalization, um, whether that's in the email or on the voucher page or the landing page. So we actually create um, vouchers that are images with a person's name in it and we create them on the fly, um, so that it has a, their name in it, a unique uh, voucher number, you know, so that there's no uh, misuse of the voucher or anything. Um, but because it's so personalized to them, um, you know, it, it relates to them, and they yeah. and they take action. So when the owner of the business is sending you a personalized email, um, it means more than just an email blast. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. I yeah, mean, absolutely. Stand out in a noisy inbox. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier that 
uh, you found great success working with day spas. Mm -hmm. And so how did you come around to being sort of the, the, you know, a good fit for them? What, what is it about them that you found like, wow, this, this system really works for them? Yeah, well, the, the thing was, is I took a look at, you know, all the different types of industries that could benefit from email marketing. And, you know, the number, as, as, a, as a marketing person, uh, the number two uh, most abused industries are dentists and chiropractors because it seems like every marketer in the world has something to sell a dentist and a chiropractor, whether it's a video or, you know, SEO or, you know, content marketing or whatever. Um, so I, I wanted to stay away from those industries from a cold email marketing perspective. I love going to the day spa. You know, I love getting a good massage and relaxing and, and, and you know, getting pampered. So uh, I realized that that was kind of an underutilized industry where they really don't have people approaching them to do the types of the type of email marketing we do. So I kind of just fell into that industry, um, and it's and it's just worked out real well. And one of the things that I love about that industry is you can use the um, gift with purchase because people who pamper themselves love to get something for free, so they're going to come in and get the massage anyway. If they're going to get a $50 free facial with it, boom. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, <laughs> I'm there. It's a win, yeah. And yeah. so it works extremely well. You know, the free gift with purchase works extremely well in that industry because chances are that person was going to come in sooner or later anyway. We're just giving them a little nudge mm -hmm. to get them in the door sooner. Nice. And they bring friends, and that's another great yeah, part. Too. Referrals. Oh, yeah. That's like yeah. something you can quantify in marketing. Like the the referrals that come in after they've gone had a good experience, or say, "Hey, look, I got this offer. Let's go in yeah. and well, do this." Yeah, actually, we can quantify it, and that's part of what we do is we help the business to see, oh, good. you know, what what that does to them. You know, bringing a new person into a day spa is worth, you know. Anywhere from eighteen hundred to twenty four hundred dollars in the next twelve months. Nice. Um, so wow, you really do measure everything. Yeah, we measure everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so when so when when somebody gets an offer and they bring a friend in, that's a, that's a ton of money that mm -hmm. that that business has a potential to make. Do you, you know? are you is it like an offer that says bring a friend or do you have like the front desk track it? You know, like so and so came in with voucher bought. Yeah. So so what all our clients do. Um, and it's part of the agreement of working with us is that they're going to close the loop for us because number one is we don't want to send somebody an email to come in and, and get a massage with a facial two days after they've come in and gotten it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times this is, it's instant gratification. They get the voucher, they book the appointment right away, they come in. So mm -hmm. in that 16 day period that we're sending the sequence out, um, most of the people are going to come in before the sequence is done. So the, the owners or the, whoever, the office manager, will close the loop with us so we can take them off the list. Yeah. Oh, but it helps us to track so yeah. that we know, you know, we know exactly what the metrics are. And, of course, you know, we know the value of the offer. We know what the client's paying. And uh, our clients, they're all open to sharing, you know, uh, the types of uh, revenue they'll generate from a repeat customer. Great. So, so we can do the analytics for them. They don't have to. Perfect. That's awesome. And so the vouchers are specific to each customer then, or they can be? Well, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're personalized to each customer, but it's the same offer per campaign. So, so you're counting on the business to, to keep track of that for you to let you know that this person's done, yeah. uh, bought into it or whatever it may yep, be. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. Yeah, and, and they're happy to do that because, um, you know, it makes them look good. We're not sending the same offer to somebody again who just sure. two days earlier right. came in and took advantage of it. So, so you're, you're really partnering with the businesses. I mean, they're, yep. they're part of the whole process. Wow. Well, <laughs> taking stuff. email He's marketing a, to the next level. Yeah, no, and no doubt. obviously, yeah. It's uh, been a tremendous amount of information. I love the fact that you measure everything because <laughs> if you don't, how do you know if you've been successful? True mm -hmm. enough. So is that, the, is that the big takeaway uh, from all this then is that the advantages of working with someone like yourself is that you're getting very targeted strategy for email marketing. Everything's being measured and it really allows you to see where you're being successful and where you need to make adjustments. Perfectly said. 
Awesome. Wow, right. really? Cool Nothing to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll Good be job, Justin. Yeah. You can now sell email yeah, marketing. Even a blind too. squirrel finds a nut <laughs> you know, every once in a while. <laughs> our, uh, our tagline is, you know, more sales more often with less effort and expense. And that's really what it's about. You know, it's using an, uh, an asset that you have already have in your business in a, in a better way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, your email list is an asset. There's, there's revenue in that list waiting for you to mine if you'll just go pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody that I've met is doing it at the same level that we're doing it, um, yeah. you know, from a revenue generation standpoint. So, yeah. And they say that a current customer is, what, like six times more likely to buy from you? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, so, how many day spas are out there doing, like, half-page or full-page ads in a magazine, and they're not even using email marketing to this extent? Exactly. You know, it's it's probably just about reallocating some resources for marketing, not, you know... It, you shouldn't just do email marketing and mm-hmm. you shouldn't just do my type of email marketing. I think branding and awareness is extremely mm-hmm. important. Um, I would agree with I, that. I, I love, I love <laughs> the, well, no, but I love the people that, that do that because social media is important. Staying in, staying in front of your clients is always important. Quality like photography social. is important. Yeah. It's all important. Thanks for pulling me in. I feel, I, feel like exactly. Exactly. I, I guess my example was just that, you know, so many businesses will be like, well, I'm doing my advertisement and that's all I need to do. And they're kind of just like, mm-hmm. What is it like? They're sleeping on this gold mine. They're they have this hidden gem that they could be utilizing, yeah. or they'll do the monthly email blast. Maybe if they have well, time, <laughs> it goes back to that whole spray and pray thing. Like uh, I'll just I'll put an ad in a newspaper and that'll yeah. take care of everything. Yeah, exactly. And no way to track it. There's no way to track it. Yeah. Exactly. So, so Ed, we we're so glad that you came in yes. and joined us today to talk to us and uh, teach us all about this proprietary process that you developed, and. If someone wanted to get in touch with you to learn more about this or to work with you, how would they do that? Um, they can visit my website, which is www. See, that's I'm showing my age here. <laughs> Forget the W. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, ecemarketingservices.com, or they can just give me a call at my office, 508-296. Um, sorry, 508 uh, <sighs> I can't remember my money. My notes. It's okay. We, we're going to put you the yeah. link to your website in the show notes, and uh, they can just yeah. click there. And I'm sure your website. I, has I got it now. Over. It's five eight it? two nine six five zero zero one. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> it's all right. Hey, a marketing guy doesn't know his number. Happens, How good is that? You might know your time. email though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do know. I do know my email. It's ed at ecemarketingservices.com. There awesome. you go. Well, thanks again uh, for joining us and. I believe that wraps up this episode. It does. Of the Marketing Essentials podcast. So until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. And as always, you can find the back episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts. And you can also find us on our YouTube channel. Both of them are the Marketing Essentials team. You can find us on the web at marketingessentialsteam.com. And if you subscribe through our website, you'll receive a weekly email and letting you know when each episode has been published. Also, you'll receive a link to subscriber-only content. You can also find us on Facebook and our private Facebook group. Just search Little Roadie Marketing Support Group. It's a great place for other marketing professionals and business owners where we can share marketing advice, challenges, and general trends. Hope to see you there.